Our next keynote speaker is an editor of the media.am of the Media Initiative Center. So please welcome Mr. Geram Vatanian. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, I was suggested to speak uh, for this discussion like, like two days ago. And I was involved in media coverage of this conflict since the first days. And starting from October 1, I, I had a chance to be in conflict zone in Stepanakert, in, in Martuni, in Kelbajar, in Lachi, several times. And uh, like covering stories, working with foreign journalists and so on. So, but as far as I was involved in the uh, current reporting, uh, news and so on. Uh, I, I had a little time to observe what is going on in media, how coverage goes, who write what. So usually, I, 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 I usually our website media.am is media literacy and media analytics website. Uh, but uh, for this month and half, like 40, 45 days, I had a little chance, little chance to observe. Let me say. Uh, to to watch on news covering in a structure structurized way, but I, I'm telling this to say that now I I I, I will try to reflect uh, my experience with you to to share my experience with you and uh, my thoughts with you, uh, and uh, I, I will divide that, uh, the, my talk to the. Uh, my topics to two parts. Uh, first, local journalists and uh, second, foreign journalists for the locals. The news flashed 27th September morning, early morning, and starting for uh, uh, 27th morning, at, uh, it was 7 a.m. Uh, war, uh, war started, and at already at 10 a.m., Many Armenian journalists are sending, are starting to send, uh, starting to send their uh, journalists to the front line. Uh, what is interesting for Armenian media? Uh, Armenian media journalists, uh, media outlets, they usually do not prepare well in terms of security to work in conflict zones. Uh, many journalists went there just without any security equipment. Uh, we as an organization, Media Initiative Center, uh, we've seen that gap like four or five years ago after 2016 uh, April war, as it called it, four day war, and uh, we found money from fundraise with international organization and with some fundraise with the people and we bought like 12 uh, packs of equipment, security equipment, vests and helmets and so on. And within two hours, we gave it, gave all them out. Like a local journalist uh, took from us like security equipment uh, and uh, headed it, had it to Karabakh. Uh, after that, the, this, this gap of uh, security measurements for journalists working there, especially locals, uh, was one of the tasks for us and for many others. And we managed to vote new ones, others managed to vote new ones. So, but uh, first two weeks of the war, many Armenian journalists, locals working there, especially journalists from Karabakh, their public TV, uh, their local media outlets, they working, let, let me say, without any protection. And, but they working with courage, they, 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 they uh, trying to cover everything, they, they literally risk their lives. Uh, and Media Center was established in Stepanakert, starting for the, from the first or second days of the war. Then another one was established in the south, uh, Armenian town Goris, near the border of uh, Armenia and Karabakh. Uh, and local journalists, any, every single Armenian local journalist wanted to be in Karabakh and cover the story 
uh, for the Armenian uh, society, Armenian, Armenian population in Armenian language. Besides that, the second second part maybe it, it, it is about international coverage. Uh, like more than 300 foreign journalists uh, were uh, uh, got accreditation uh, from Armenian MFA and from Karabakh MFA, uh, numbers even high. Uh, so starting from the first days of, of the war, it was obvious that uh, Armenia needs this international coverage. Uh, and Armenia acted as transparent as it possible to get this international coverage. Uh, like for, for foreign journalists, it was very easy to get accreditation online, very easy to uh, get accreditation uh, in Nagorno-Karabakh. And um, th those who, who visited, or those foreigners who visited uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, Artsakh, uh, they know you should, uh, foreigners should need, need visa to, to go there. For the first two weeks, uh, even visa procedures wasn't uh, pro respected. So many journalists went for the uh, first two weeks uh, to Karabakh without any uh, visa even. Uh, so uh, media center worked there, uh, uh, but any journalist working in Stepanakir risks, risks their lives. Locals, international, because uh, it was to continuously becoming dangerous and dangerous, dangerous to work there. Uh, too many factors. One is bombing of, of the city. City was under uh, constant shelling starting from October 3, October 4, uh, and many journalists uh, they they need to uh, electricity cut off, electricity cut off, internet problems, and so on and so on. Uh, problems with the hotels, problems with the food even, and so on. But many journalists stayed and continues to work. Uh, others are continue their work from uh, Goris, near, nearest city uh, in the south uh, to Karabakh. Some of the, uh, them, uh, because uh, the media center was established in Goris as well, some of them uh, continues their, continued their work from Goris, uh, traveling to the Stepanakert back and forth. But even road was, was dangerous, this uh, 80 kilometers uh, long road. Uh, but, Journalists, many journalists, they, they do this trip from uh, Yerevan to Stepanakert, from Yerevan to Goris, Goris to Stepanakert, many times. Uh, and even, even uh, after uh, peace agreement, uh, no, I mean, truce or uh, ceasefire agreement, November 9, November 10, uh, we traveled there at November 12th, and uh, for that time, uh, media center established by uh, local government, they did not operate. By the way, this media center was in the one place, then, then it, because of security, it moved to the other place, uh, let me say, to the cellar, to the bunker, uh, uh, literally, for journalists. Uh, and. Uh, journalists, uh, they they uh, they had a opportunity to work there. They had internet there. They have even, uh, even places uh, to uh, to spend night there because it was dangerous. It was literally dangerous to travel uh, in the town from the point A to point B because you never you will never know when the shelling will start, when the siren will, will go on, and when when dangerous when it will become dangerous. Uh, the journalists they are working, sharing food, sharing <laughs> internet and so on. Like it was a like community of the journalists. Uh, so on November 12th, even when we traveled to Stepanakert, uh, the city was very few people were in the city. Uh, it was uh, uh, no, no proper hotel. Uh, we had electricity. Uh, internet was very, very uh, weak. And, uh, but, but even at that time, uh, journalists in the one of the hotels they established. The, the, let me say they, they self uh, media rooms, media center, and continue continuing to to work. 
So, which means the war uh, attracted interest of many, uh, or many inter attracted interest of international media. And uh, I've seen main main international media coverage there. Uh, I've seen uh, local uh, TV channels like German uh, TV channels were, were there, French, uh, Ita Italian, Spain, uh, uh, Israeli, uh, and, uh, like let me say, uh, Armenian government um, they, they gave access to literally everyone to to cover the the story, and uh, because it was very important for Armenia to, uh, to tell the world. Uh, about the constant shelling of the of the town uh, settlements of Nagorno-Karabakh, it was important to tell the stories of IDPs, uh, to tell the stories of people who refused to leave the uh, settlements, their houses, and uh, continuously living in the cellars, in the bomb shelters, in the bunkers, uh, and uh, the the one of the major parts of international coverage for Armenia was the story of mercenaries uh, fighting uh, from other Azerbaijani side. Uh, so as far as uh, I followed the topic, uh, Armenia got the, like, uh, 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 Armenian side got, got more, 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 more positive coverage in international media. It's it's a question for the war how it helps or not, but I think uh, people was on the side of Armenia because of this international coverage as well. And one notice uh, I was uh, listening to Dr. Wolfgang uh, about the Azerbaijani side coverage. Uh, let me say uh, yes, in Armenia we had more international journalists and still we have international journalists covering the story from our side uh, but uh, to say the truth uh, in Azerbaijani side there were international journalists as well and they covered the story from Azerbaijani side as well uh, it's not comparable in terms of transparency in terms of democracy in terms of access in terms of, of uh, state control let me say uh, but to say the truth yes Azerbaijan uh, got international coverage from their side as well. Uh, again, as I said, this is kind of reflection for me. Uh, and coming back to the security issues, for example, we, we've seen that uh, our French journalists were injured in, in town Martuni. Uh, September 4th or 3rd, as I remember, uh, the, the October, sorry. And again, uh, even international journalists, as French journalists, they, they haven't uh, wear uh, proper security equipment. Uh, uh, and the second case was in Shushi in the middle of October, when Azerbaijani site hit uh, Hazan Chetsot's church twice. And the uh, second hit uh, by so from the second hit to two or three Russian journalists wounded and taken to the hospital. So it was very dangerous war to cover. I talked to many international journalists covering many wars in Iraq, in Libya, in Afghanistan, uh, being uh, embedded in the with the like American forces, and they say uh, this war is very different for journalists to cover because if you are in the front line. Uh, you can you can hide uh, somewhere. You can film uh, from the somber security uh, place which was which is secure. But even in the middle of the town, in the middle of the settlement, in the middle of the road, you with uh, Karabakh case, you never know when drone will attack you or when uh, shelling will start. Uh, so. Many international journalists were advised to leave the uh, town for a while, uh, coming back and forth. So it was uh, really interesting experience for journalism in terms of security 
as well. Uh, because working under the constant shelling and bombing, uh, working uh, with the risk of not having electricity or not having internet to send, to be able to send your material to, uh, to your editor, uh, that, that was the conditions uh, how the international media covered the Karabakh war, Karabakh second war, let me say. Uh, so again, th th this was my, my reflection and I, I will be glad to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much, Mr. Vatanyan, for your insights. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, I, I, I can read Maria Roshko. The question is, uh, the, uh, the, uh, am I, uh, did I know any, any uh, cases when Armenian journalists uh, uh, wounded or, or wounded? Yes, uh, some Armenian jo journalists were wounded and injured as well. Uh, the case when French journalist uh, group uh, Liberation, as far as I remember, uh, maybe not. Uh, in Martuni, the, the, uh, the artillery hit the uh, town and journalists were working there and uh, two French journalists were injured and one Armenian journalist, uh, uh, French were wounded, one Armenian journalist uh, injured and they was taken to hospital and two others were uh, injured but, but uh, slightly, so no, yeah, three Armenian journalists at least were injured. Thank you very much, Mr. Batanyan, for your time. You're you welcome. For your insights.